is our security person to uh, give us a little update on what's all going on with security. Good evening, Kevin. welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, it's, been, it's been quite a while, so um, there's, there's a lot of things that we've, we've done, and uh, I'm back what we've done see. is we've, not, we've gotten a hold of a state South Dakota Education Board safety and security team. They're going to come to the, on the 25th and assess our safety plan for all our schools. So first set of eyes, anything that we might have missed, you know, we can we can utilize whatever they, they bring up. We can we can fix things. Um, they're going to initially start off with the, the schools in town, and then they're going to set a date at a later time for the, for the outlying schools, so we would be able to to come up with a a plan like, again with the first set of eyes. <coughs> um, as far as we have currently, we have. Eight CPI instructors, crisis prevention intervention um, instructors, and we have four Alice instructors. Um, we've been doing training in the schools as time permits at each school. So if, if they have time, we can go, go over and go over the, the protocol, the Alice protocol, the emergency plan itself. Um, if we can get CPI in, we've been mostly doing verbal and we're not doing the physical side yet. Um, so, we, another thing is cameras. This past week we received cameras for the middle school, the elementary school, Supply, T-Dog, Oak Creek, and we still have more cameras coming in. So now we're gonna have to come up with a plan to start to um, start putting these, these cameras up. So we've got, we've got a couple of young guys that I'm pretty sure we can start getting things done pretty quick. Um, radios, we're still waiting. It's been over a year, but it's there waiting for the boards or something in, in the radios themselves. We had to um, service some radios from the high school and the, and the middle school. So we got new battery packs and they reprogrammed them. Our compound lights out at the in the yard here. We've got the, the wall packs up, but we're waiting for them to trench, and they're talking maybe September. So it's, that's another thing that's been about a year. So they're, they're backlogged quite a bit. Yeah, I got uh, seven volunteers to be CPI and um, Alice instructors, active shooter instructors. Our goal is to have have somebody in each school so that if there is time, we can go over the emergency plan at any time. You know, if we, if we have a half a day, we can pull everybody in and we can just go over it. You'll have an instructor in that school. Um, Officer Denoyer also wanted to, to become an instructor so he could, he could help, you know, with the, the training. Um, I currently have four open security guard jobs. So we're, we're attempting to recruit, we're calling, trying to find, you know, uh, guards to come in. And at uh, the very end, it, I would like to, if at all possible, to have a Alice, um, uh, just a short um, presentation for the board, a working meeting for the Alice Protocol and the active shooter so we can take one of the one of our um, emergency plans from any of the schools and we can go over it with you and you guys will understand more of, of the concept of what we're looking at for the safety of our kids. I would like that too because I've been kind of out of the loop for a while so I would very much like to see that and hear about it. Yeah. Um, and maybe I missed it, you skipped over eight the sentinel protocol okay the sentinel protocol is i'm i'm recommending we we look into it i'm not saying that we have to go ahead and do it it's it's what it is is you have an individual who will have to go through the police background the police training for retention and law and that that goes up in the pier and they would be carrying concealed in the school um that 
would be up to law enforcement as well as us because we have to work with them and they have to approve the background and, and everything else. Even if we don't have somebody in the schools, if we had to sign up, it would be a psychological, something psychological to stop any, anybody trying to come in to hurt our kids. Our so, so maybe that's something we should just talk about on the work session and then maybe have that the law that the state of South Dakota passed about that, didn't they pass? Yes. About it and have that available to review and look at? And I can have, uh, I can also get a hold of the, the chief administrator or our representative and have them come down too. So we're all on the same, if you like. Um, we have to do all that training every year. We have to be certified in that. And there's, do you know John Musto? Yeah. He's the one that does our training and we all have to be certified, all of us. Yeah. The dean of students clear down and it's it's a week long training. Yeah. And they go to all this training. I think that's beneficial for anyone and everyone to go through that. And all staff have to do that. It's, it's a computer, you know, online. Yeah. We do active shooting training too with the Bureau. It's required for our jobs to do it yearly. I have mine tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So no, I would be interested in seeing it and seeing everything, Kevin, and hearing about it and having a longer opportunity to ask some questions. Yep. Yep. Because a lot of stuff that we, they, we, I learned from our training and through our deal is. You don't want to put too much information out there to yes. the public. Yes, it's just general and then Yeah, the it's just generalized and specifics kind of stay, yeah. So I, I would be, uh, it would be nice to have a work session to go through some of that. So just we're assured and we know what's happening in the schools when a situation comes up. And, and our, um, our active shooter instructors are, are current. So we're continuing that so we can continue down the line to do this and the CPI also. We had a pretty good turnout last spring for the CPI during yeah. the in service at the end of the year. I was impressed with the numbers. So again we just used the, the verbal side because of COVID we didn't want to go hands on. I do have a few questions. Okay. <laughs> um, and number three, the cameras. You said you received those cameras for one, two, three, four, five, six places. Do they not have cameras, or these are just newer cameras? Or yeah, we're updates? updating cameras. Updating? Uh, what we're doing is we're trying to centralize all the cameras to go to our IT, so that if, let's say, an uh, incident happened and law enforcement comes, we can have one log to, and we can control who gets that, that um, video, you know, instead of each school give, giving that out, we can have centralized and we can, go, we can control that. So, in, in regards to this, do you have access to that? Do you get to access to check all the other I, schools? I, I would, yes. On, on do my, you now? Have you now? I have some of the schools, the ones that we had, we updated the cameras so far. Once we do this, I'll have all of them. But the, the high school, um, just I think last week allowed us to, to access their into the IT, or so so it's streamed into IT now. But some of the other schools, we're still going to have to work on trying to get the the cameras updated, and we can centralize everything from there. So, what is your title? Uh, safety and security co coordinator. So to me, to me, I mean, like the cameras in the high school, if there's an issue up there. You would have access to that. Yes. Would you not? Do you have that? I do not. Not right now. My key has it, but I don't. Why? Uh, right now we have everything with set up in red, white hats office. But you can go in there and access them I, and look I, at them I, anytime. I can ask him to to review an incident that happens in the school. You have access to it but not necessarily at, a, at one like, location. Like on my computer, no. Yeah. So the goal is to get to where your office is, you would be able to access any one of these cameras at any school, and if need be, you would be able to pull that fragment 
of recording yep. for instead of like an incident happened that needed to be reviewed by a parent or a principal or our law enforcement if it came to that then you would be the central place that they would call you would find it you would access it and have it available for you yeah it, it, it would be to the I, IT and then we have a log at IT so that if one of the there is an incident one of the guys can pull it out pull out a receipt sign it over to the board law enforcement emergency services anything and we would just have a running log from now until so I guess my only question is is then who would have the authority to to just sign out whatever they wanted to sign out I mean that wouldn't be appropriate as a as a single board member to say, oh, I heard about this, well, I'll just go check it out, and I'll just go over no, there and sign members. it out. I mean, no, no, is no, there going to be some all, type of, uh, or law enforcement, somebody's family says, oh, well, this, well, well, don't worry about it, I can just go over there and look at it. Well, I mean, what is, is there a protocol of how, when you say a log where so-and-so can just go over there, I mean, what is the protocol for, for that? We have a certain surveillance policy. We're going to let the, the lawyers review it. It's okay. the same one that, that Huron has. It's just, we just rewrote it for us. And it covers everything as far as the FCC, all the laws. Okay. And, and who would be able to, all right. to get a hold of any of these things? Confidentiality. Yeah. Mainly. Yep. I mean, it's like you don't just say. And the principals are very aware also of who can view, who cannot. Very limited access in every building. So view only at the at the, the administrative level each building and then to to download would be at IT. So that you can actually set the put the settings up. Also you could access the history of let's say whenever I reviewed something, they would be able to see the date and time. Okay. And they would be able to access the IT Number four. You said radios. You said for over a year you've been waiting for them, and then you said, I wrote on mine, and you said you're waiting on them because of the board. Why did you say that? The board chips. The, the, it's, a, it's a like a motherboard that they that put board. in. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh. they're probably <laughs> sitting on the ship somewhere. <laughs> it's, you it's said motherboard now. It's, it's a supply thing. It's a supply. It's no different with the cameras. They were ordered 10 months ago. Like yeah. Right. Right. Well, I would have understood like, oh. motherboard, but not. Oh, 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 I knew. I know, you did it? Like, I did too. I was like, <laughs> well, I board. thought it was like a, a, a mm -hmm. thing in the yeah. radio. Yeah. <laughs> and the next and one. I figured it was sitting on a ship. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. You have seven volunteers. Are they all trained? And what no. they will be? They will be. I, I'm going to get them into training this year. Okay. Um, and seven additional additional to what we have now. So because because of the turnover rate that we've been experiencing, I, I want to make sure that we have enough to cover if we need need to to train everybody as much as we can. And I, I'm I'm really a big proponent in training. I mean I'd rather go over it even verbally as much as we can. I mean our charge is Save schools, save students, save staff. I mean, that's yep. that's why I'm asking all these questions. Yep. Um, number nine, four security guard positions where? In I town have, or? I have two at the high school and two at the middle school. I currently have no guards at the middle school. So what we're doing is we're, we're having um, like um, different ones are coming on and covering and then I'm spending time back and forth between here and the high school, or high school and middle school. So, so we got somebody there, but we, we're still looking for the guards. Are the outline schools covered? I have two guards, one at Key Dog and one at Rosebud, and they're covered. And if there's something goes on, I if uh, the SRO doesn't go, I'll jump in the car and I'll go out to these outline schools. So total number of guards that we have? Nine. Nine? And the oh, SRO no, is 11. pretty much housed out at the middle school, so that helps some yeah. too. Yeah. That's all 
my questions. Well, that made me think of a question. Her question did. Um, we, you have one at Rosebud, you have one at HEDOC. Um, what would be the situation if something would happen at Spring Creek? What is, what do you have in place for that? Myself and SRO. But what is your time to get there? It's, it's a while. So is there protocol in place to call law enforcement? Depending on the situation, it's, it's very situational. If, if let's say we have um, a fight, uh, as, as part of the protocols, call law, law enforcement and notify security, um, and then we go through that, that process. I, again, when, when we go over the, the um, go over this, go over the plan, then we, we can see everything. It, it, we try to keep it generic. Because okay. the situations change. Yeah, I know. I fully so. understand that. I guess my only concern is some of our outlying schools are way out there in time of a, is of essence in some situations. And in, in, in our outlying schools, what we, we currently do is keep them in secure status where the outer doors are locked, the inner doors are locked. Um, they're vigilant, and they're they're actually a lot more secure than than what people would realize. Okay. Does any other board members have any questions, concerns? No. You know, and, and just to let you guys know, we, we are helping um, the preschool and um, Head Start. We, we did mm -hmm. give them our outline so they, they could use it to, to um, get their own protocol into place. I spoke with the education board. Um, they wanted me to come back over with with one of the plans and go over it with them so they could try to get this all the way across the board, the Alice Protocol, across the tribe. So hopefully we can help them with that. When are you, you thinking, David Joe, of to meeting over that's <coughs> whenever we can get together and do it. What are you think thinking? <coughs> Is any oh, time gonna work? Any time. I've got I I've, I've got all these instructors. We can we can free somebody up if we have to at any time. So. Well, with school just starting, I would say the sooner the better. I would think. Probably September sometime. If we went towards the end of September? About the last week in September? Is that? that works for me. How about you, Linda? Yeah, that's a good idea. You'll be moving? You'll be dancing? I should be. Let's hope. Yeah. Okay. Stage in Michelle, does that work? The 26th through the 30th is the very last week in September. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, and the 26th is a board meeting, a regular board oh. meeting. <coughs> True. Do you have anything? Except our regular board meeting on Monday? Yeah. 28th. What day is that? It's a Wednesday. Does it work for you, Deb? What is about the 27th? Does the 27th work for you, Sage, or no? 27th or 29th? Tuesday or Thursday? Five. Because these early ones, I, it's hard for me to do early ones. Five. Five. Does the 27th work, Linda? Yes, it will. Michelle? We're just getting started on the schedule for classes, and I honestly don't play, but what, what my calendar is going to look like. You guys go ahead and start it. If I can be there, I will. Okay. 27th on Tuesday, 27th.
September. I like, if people ask, I like to plan it so that otherwise I think there's a tendency that you forget it. Mm -hmm. And when they first ask, you should just schedule it and date it and then, and then you're going to ensure that it happens. It's Did you have any safety security questions for Kevin? And then he'll have, he should have that um, peer office will have been down and um, done their on site visit to make oh, recommendations of the plan. Yep. So yep. that'll be good as well. Yeah, I can review that. Yeah. So. Do you guys have to do um, an Narcan training? No, we haven't done it. Do you think that maybe possibility that's something that needs to happen yep. within our schools? Yep. I can. I will look that up now. Okay. The information. So Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Have a nice evening. Thank you. If you want to hang out, you can. Have a good evening. Thanks, I, I won't ask no more questions. <laughs> I'll ask a whole bunch. I'll ask a whole bunch. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, current enrollments, I have numbers. It doesn't mean that is current attendance, Tenants. but it is the numbers. So, Key Dog, we have 186, Klein 14, Lakeview 28, Little Bird 21, Oak Creek 24, Rosebud. 292, but 230 is the most they've had in attendance. They did a little more detailed report. Spring Creek 55, um, Achieve Middle School 12, Achieve High School 15, TCES uh, 489, and they've been hovering, I think, a little bit closer to 400, with what Bobby said this morning. High School um, 444, and the Middle School 347. So we have two bus drivers that are going to take the driving test and then they will cla be class B as well and can drive any size bus. And our secretary dispatcher has started, so that is good news. Morning. Yep. Yes. So um, I'm sure you've heard a little bit about the high school, South Dakota High School Activities Association and the shortage of football officials and games being moved. Um, so the original scheduled times are not 100% accurate, but they're, they're more accurate than I thought at first. So um, the game Friday is at 7 o'clock central time, so that isn't really a change on our schedule. And then um, on the second, it is at 1 o'clock here against Shine Eagle Butte. So, and there was a conflict with one other one, and I'll let you know. Chuck was going to contact officials to see um, what time another game would need to be. So with that, homecoming will be September 23rd. The game will be at 4. And the parade will start at 11, and buses will run at 1. Um, just want to continue to remind everyone about the mental health series from the Cook Center. The first one is um, suicide prevention. There is a newsletter in your packet um, that, can, that is from the, the Cook Center and September is suicide prevention month. So um, just wanna make sure we share that. Uh, and then they have other um, series that come out. We'll do one a month on Wednesday night. So, and we'll keep posting that. They send us about a month in advance, right, Josh? Yeah, they send us all the media. Stuff yeah, so they're very good that way. Um, in your packets, uh, the um, task force got together last week very timely and sent out their new um, COVID protocols, so to match the CDC guidelines, and they got it to us right away, so that is nice So we have that in print and updated. Um, the back of that one is the the e-care, and Roxanne and Bobby and I met with them last week. Um, we'll talk about different proposals 
Um, we thought maybe we would have another nurse applying, so we'll see what our need is before we actually um, decide on on the care that we need or the, the, the uh, programs that you know, we can do different levels of care, so depending on the availability. Uh, the next one is um, a partnership with the South Dakota Office of Indian Education, and I talked to Krista a little bit today. Uh, we didn't have anybody that wanted to partner with us, and mainly because they felt we were probably further ahead. So um, we said, well, maybe we could help others move forward. So, and then again, that's the suicide prevention information. Um, there's some fun stuff going on. Youth Parade, August 25th. So, um, included that. And do we have this on our web page at all, Josh? Okay. Okay, so we can share that. And then a garden contest coinciding with the Rosebud Fair that I thought looked really fun, that I would share. And then uh, we had talked about high school requirements and they have not changed in, um, I think, since 2018, but the back page is what the high school offers. Or has is available. this what our high school offers? The very back one, yes. Yep. And where are the extra, um, oh, I see. I'm, I'm getting it, okay. Yeah. Um, the next report is from Anna. About she wasn't coming. Excuse me. I thought they were going to come and give their reports. Um, I wasn't going to have all of them at once. It's like Kevin's would be lengthy and Krista's would have been lengthy tonight. But okay. So then they'll yeah. come another time. Yeah. So, and if you have one you specifically would like to visit with, let me know. Would so you? if we have questions on this, should we contact them or go through you? Um, you can contact them directly. I think that would be fine. It would be nice to have a schedule of when. Who's coming when? Yes. yes. Okay. I think we can do that. Okay. Uh, the next one is Bo for food service. Pretty short. It's beginning of the year. Uh, that's why I didn't know how much there would be to report. We, they literally gave it to me last week, not even a week in school. So, um, And then the counselors uh, gave more of your their training and what they're doing. They're very busy and have been very proactive um, with the social emotional. They're very, um, very good about uh, getting training lined up and participating. Could you provide us a schedule of, of how you're going to schedule sure. them to come? But I would ask, yeah. could we meet with the high school sooner mm -hmm. rather than later? Uh, well, they've um, so the schools come the first meeting, so they could come September seventh. Yeah, I, would, uh, I have some questions. Are the our first board meeting in September is the twelfth? Okay. I have some questions for the high school. Okay. That I'd rather hear answers to sooner rather than halfway through the school year. Okay. So that is what I have for updates and my report. I have some questions, Sarah. You mentioned the COVID stuff. I went on went on the site today and saw that all of the COVID stuff was updated in February of 2022. Are all those things still in place? Like the cohorts at the elementary and all those things that they said they were doing? Uh, they were supposed to review those. I think if need be, they can be, because I, if I remember correctly, um, cohort groups weren't um, highly recommended anymore. But like if there's a positive case, then that classroom would mask and um, um, watch for, you know, symptoms. And the symptoms have changed a little bit. So where is all this information? Has it gone out to any of the parents? It has there been a PSA? Are you going to take that information down? Because I don't think anybody reviewed it because it looks pretty much the same. Well, we reviewed it in May, so we haven't done anything since the CDC last week, so we need to review that again. Well, it'd be nice if you did that right away if the parents knew what was going on. Okay. Well, we can put, um, we can put the guidelines that um, the task force 
um, shared with us up as well. I think this would be okay. beneficial for, right. for them. My other, to get it out there. my other question, Carol, is um, is there going to be enough time for out of out of school to come in to the, for the homecoming break? Yeah, there should be. And they, okay. they have they have the discretion to handle that how they want. Okay, these students? Yes, yep, and they've been told that. So if they want to do a regular lunch, and you know, they can do whatever they choose that way. They just have to coordinate that with Bo. Okay, and then are we getting that early on the, the day of the, the youth grade and what he Thursday, is staff days. getting we out early? We don't have early. school Thursday or Friday. Is staff available to go and to the youth day? We can ask them. It's a non-work day, but we can Oh, ask. no. Well, we were just making sure that they don't have to go, but I, oh, unless right. they choose to, I was just making sure that they also had the day off if some of no. them wanted to go. Yeah, we don't that have they school. weren't going to be here working. Yeah. So can you clarify that again, Melissa? They won't be here working, so if they want to go and participate, they would have that. They could go and do that. There's no school Thursday? Yeah, there's that's... No, there's no school Thursday or Friday. There's no school Thursday and Friday, and it's a non-work day for staff. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. It's a non-work... Yeah, but isn't the youth day on Wednesday? On Thursday. Um, w it's on Thursday. Wednesday is free carnival night. Is a youth powwow though on Wednesday? I thought it was. Well, all of the pageants are Wednesday, and then that's the. The information I have is the parade is at ten on Wednesday. That's the youth parade is at ten on Wednesday. August 25th is the youth parade. So this one's um, so my child question care. Is, are we gonna have to that early so they can be involved in that? Oh no, it starts out, it's on Thursday. Yeah. The flyer that we got in our packet, Linda, is the youth parade is the 25th of August, registration starting at 11, and the parade starts at noon. Okay, so they must have changed it then. Yep. Thursday. Okay, yeah. all right. And then, uh, yes, I have one more question. Are we going to mandate masking with the COVID going around? I think that's on the agenda. That's on the agenda, she said, for further down. Okay, all right. I'm kind of out of it. I'm taking direct. <laughs> that's fine. You're good. Take care of your knee. Use your ice machine. <laughs> And then you're going to send that out by email again, what you just read to us? It's already up there. I don't get on. I, I got a new computer, too. Can you just email it to me yeah. on my Yahoo? On your Yahoo? Yeah. I don't see no mask for me. I thought it was supposed to be on there. Or I can try it on this new one and see if I can get on it. I couldn't figure that MacBook out. It was no, we said we were going to discuss. Over my we? head, so. I don't see MacBook. We said we would discuss. That's how we ended that. So we can have that discussion. So we can have the discussion now then. Yeah. Linda? Linda? Yeah. It's not yeah. on it's not on the agenda. So we can discuss okay. that now. Okay. Well I think we need to do at least for a little while, Mandy, especially with the hair coming up. I know a lot of classrooms have two that are sick right now. And I know we have staff we have food. And I think just to prevent it from getting out of hand, we mask up for however long we think we need it. Not all year, not all quarter, whatever, but just so we're trying to prevent it that spread from getting worse. So like after we return from the fair for a certain amount of time, is that what you're thinking, Linda? Yes. Yeah. 
we kind of get an idea of how many kids are going to be sick and how many staff members are going to be out from because of it. Because it is, I mean, we know it's in the schools right now. Even if it's for a month or, you know, I don't know, until the first of October or whatever, and then we keep checking on it. I know people are saying, well, you don't get that sick if you've been vaccinated. We don't know how many people have been vaccinated. We don't know how many staff members have been vaccinated. So we don't really know. And we don't know how many grandmas have been vaccinated. I don't know, that's my feeling. Opinions, board. We did have one staff person that emailed all of us. Did you get your email, Linda? We had a staff email. I got it before I came. No, I didn't get it. I didn't look. I just went to physical therapy today. Yeah. And, and she made some good points in her email, some really good points. It would, ew. But then I, uh, I guess my thing is, is do you trust? Because we can't ask people's vaccination status. That's mm -hmm. part of HIPAA. Um, I, w I would hope though that people would be, if they've been out and about, and not just for the fair, because we have the state fair oh, coming up. Out. We have some big yeah. things coming up that if you're in a large crowd and you think that you potentially have been exposed or whatever that you are being considerate mm -hmm. and wearing your mask even if you're somebody who's anti-mask yeah we have anti-mask people around here i hate to say that but we do that we have to stop that and still believe in it that we, we that we need to be considerate but we also have staff who do and who take it serious and i would feel really bad if it go, that street goes both ways. If a child who doesn't show anything would then give it to their teacher, then their teacher could yeah. potentially take it home to their family, and they have elderly people in their family just like we have elderly people in our family here. Right. It's a hard, it's a hard. This is a hard one. <laughs> Sage, you got any thoughts? Last numbers I saw were pretty low, but they were from last week. So. But I assume they're going to go up after the fair because we have people coming out of state. Uh, I don't know how many people go over to the fair and see the powwow grounds, the carnival, and I'm pretty sure the carnival people aren't going to be wiping down stuff after every kid gets on and yeah. off. I'm not in favor of a year long. I'm not in favor of a whole quarter. I don't think that I'm, I'm not. Because I, I personally myself, and I don't care, my vaccination status is I'm completely, I've done every booster. I've done the whole nine yards. And I wore my mask for two years. And I have a hard time putting it back on. I don't think we need to do it for a whole year or for even for a quarter. I think just to be on the safe side, we do it for at least a month because of all the fairs that are going on and you know all this money that everybody got this weekend. People were out and about shopping and stuff, so we don't know what those numbers are going to look like. Plus, those numbers that they put on are accurate because if you're self-testing yourself at home, that doesn't show up anywhere. So the numbers might look low, but they're not. Maybe they're not. If these anti people don't want to wear them, don't wear them. Don't, don't spread it either. Michelle. Yes. Do you have an opinion on masks? Um, I really think we were discussing it in our nursing department. They've been discussing it at the college. We just talked about COVID again today where I was at. And um, there will be an increased number of COVID cases because of all the extra people that are going to be gathered together. But I don't know that mandating masks is going to slow the spread or anything like that. I mean, you know what I mean? It's still, my personal opinion would be it should be optional, but that's my opinion. <coughs> Thank you. 
the one other staff person who made a point from the nursing department was that you know the fair is outdoors, so it is a look. It's not the same as being indoors. So um, that's the only other comment I really heard. <coughs> My opinion is we follow what the tribe does. Um, I know that sure. make, make masks optional. Have them ready at all the have them ready at the school so everybody has the opportunity to use them if they need to use them. Um, I don't know. We still have we probably have a lot of hand sanitizer supplies that we could yeah. have out there, but. That would be, and that's, that's my opinion with it, and um, if it, uh, you know, I just hope it doesn't really take off. I mean, I think so far, I just follow the tribe, what they're doing out there, if they decide it's time to move on. I mean, I really looked at some of the, I looked at some of the numbers, Linda, and uh, it'd be nice to, you know, in the past we had we had um, some of the people in contact with us to be able to provide us numbers and data. Even the the um, I think it's called from the state. You know? Yeah, from the CDC. You know, they're working at that time. That way we have making our decision based on. Yes. The readiness of the tribe, the readiness of everyone to where we're at. And any, any given option, and parents can do that. I think that's, in my personal opinion, a pretty good part of it. So, so I'm hearing that we want to stay going optional. That's my opinion, but that's only, I'm only one vote. And me, Linda, um, I'm immune compromised. I'll probably wear my mask forever. Um, me too. And I don't, um, I don't like the word mandated. You know, I, I like strongly recommend. You yeah. Know, and, and, um, but, um, and go by what, you know, CDC with the tribe. Mm -hmm. And I really think we should put in what, the handout that we got today from the task force, I think that should go out. We can put that on the web page and, and um, share that. Yeah, different. Yeah. I mean, information, the more information that we have, and I agree with what you're saying about we don't know the exact numbers, because that is true about a lot of people testing at home, yeah. and those numbers don't get reported. Mm -hmm. So, but still, I mean, I would just agree with strongly recommend, and you know, it's go well, by what. So, can we say we strongly recommend for a month? Can, 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 would kids be able to, be able to put masks on food and coffee in the bathroom? We didn't get that last part, Linda. I said, would teachers be allowed to put masks on their kids if there's coughing going on in the classroom? Because there's a lot of that going on right now. Well, if a child, she's asking if a child was coughing in a classroom, would a teacher be allowed to put a mask on that child? Well, and Linda, when there's any symptom, most of the schools have been very good about, um, you know, visiting or sending kids home if they aren't feeling well. Okay. I know that for a fact. Yeah, well, the, the principals have talked to me, absolutely, yes. And they, they were screening at the door. I don't know about this fall. Um, but when kids weren't feeling well, they were sent home. All right. Well, can we recommend, can we tell them again to this junior to give them, send them home? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, th Even if we have to put it on more than yeah. once. I mean, I think periodically yeah. if it's put out there. Communi and, uh, and communication. I think we should always strongly recommend mask wearing if you feel that you 
potentially have COVID, I think that we should all be good humans and say, I was out and I was in a crowd and I potentially could have it. And so for your safety, I'm gonna be a good human and wear my mask because it's strongly recommended. Well, yeah, the, I like that. And the tribe is still doing their, or the task force is still doing their contact tracing. So if, if I contract COVID, I would, they would call me and follow up and then I would say, well, Deb would be a close contact because she was, you know, within six feet of me for 15 minutes or more. So that, that is still in place at here locally. Okay. Because I don't think any staff member intentionally wants to give it to one of our children and have them take it home and give it to their grandmother and something bad happened. So I think if we strongly recommend that, if you feel that you could, you have potentially been in a situation where you could have contracted COVID, then please wear your mask, be considerate, be a good human. Yeah, I like that. Question on, um, is there a, I know in the past, last year, it was if you showed two symptoms, you were sent home, is there, a message we're sending to parents about the types of symptoms that whether they're sent home for testing or is there, a, I don't know. Like from, it, like a particular school, if they send a child home and what they're saying to the families? Yeah, I mean, it's, right now it's based on if you're exposed, but if there's any symptoms, I mean, there's sickness is going to start going around as they then pass prior to COVID, so yeah. it's the... I think they de it depends on, on, you know, the individual child, but they might say, you know, we ask that you take your child to the medical provider if they're running a certain temp, those kinds of things. Um, our nursing department is pretty good about guiding us on that. So yeah, because with the new variant, you know, people are not yeah. running a temp. It's not one of right. the indicators. Sign yeah. wrote. So it, could we check with Indian Health Service what they're using for a screening tool? I think they just test everybody anyway, but our, our nursing department and maybe just put a friendly reminder out there that, you know, these are the current COVID symptoms. It, you or anyone in your household is experiencing, and not just for our students and our parents and community, but also our staff. If there's anybody experiencing these symptoms, then you might want to consider getting a COVID test or using an at-home test or, you know. Yeah, I like, I like the idea, Melissa. I don't think we can just ignore and say, well, yeah, it's a variant, but you don't get that sick or anything, but it's still here and people can't still get yeah. it. And, the, and if we get an actual, what, what they're screening for, what kind of symptoms they're looking for when you go in, if you say, because right now with, we're getting towards fall, allergy season is going to start ramping yeah. up big time. Um, I know in my workplace, um, the stomach flu bug has hit the area. People, be careful. It might not be the fair food. Um, so, I mean, there's different symptoms out there that, I think it would be nice if we had an updated list from, from our local health organizations and, and put it out there as just kind of, you know, a nice, a nice, yeah, a nice service that these are things, you know, and, and our nursing staff will be looking for this, look for it at home, you know, and then put the, you know, we strongly urge if you're experiencing any of these symptoms to wear a mask until you can get a, a COVID test, something along that line. I think we've seen those yeah. in the COVID plans, and then when you go to the hospital, those, those signs are there if you are experiencing any of these symptoms. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. that the CDC changed any of those. But they have changed. Yes. Um, when you talk to individuals who've had it, it's more of the sore throat and, and those symptoms, which the sore throat was on the original list. but. It seems to be more of one. But I'm sure. A bit with yeah, but I'm sure Mission Medical Clinic and Rosebud IHS are aware of what they're yeah. looking for for yeah. symptoms, what their screening tool is, their questions are. If we could get that and maybe make it part of a, a something that goes out <coughs> to be yeah, in our dream catcher or something, because yeah, everybody reads it. Mm -hmm. 
the COVID, there should still be a COVID panel, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Roxanne still works very closely with the task force, and yeah. so, I mean, she's the... the and even if we don't, it's something you could send home with the students, yeah. or a bulletin, you know, just something. And even a friendly reminder that this is will be upon this and yeah because flu season is yeah. coming up too when we don't yeah. we don't want anyone to come when they're sick no. just run it periodically just yeah. periodically yeah. i mean you know just yeah. friendly reminder yeah. i think yeah. not just the one Even just time. something that says if if you're not feeling well you know stay home and if your student is exhibiting these symptoms you're going to ask and you know come take them on the and I'm sure our principals do that with their teachers mm -hmm. already. I mean, right. Are we going to do a board discussion now or at the end? I had some other stuff that I can wait. I do have some. Okay. Any more comments, questions? I'm done. My stuff can wait till the end. Moving on to 7 1 consent agenda. Move with a question. Melissa moved with a question. Okay, it's more of maybe an update because I've been out of the loop and more like Chad could probably tell me this. Um, your first batch of bills, page three, survey of North Elementary land. Let's update on North. Did you sell North? Did North go North? North is going to the Boys and Girls Club promotion as a, at zero cost. Okay. What we've agreed to do is with the cost, so we're going through the process. It's currently in the title Oh, okay. So. I was just wondering because I thought I thought okay, survey North Elementary land, and I didn't realize I didn't know. So I I just asked the question for an update of, of what had happened with North Elementary. That was my question. Oh, one more question. Sorry. Um, are the other supplementals that we had questioned I see they weren't some of them weren't on here those right. are forthcoming later right whatever the administrator recommends yes yeah are forthcoming yet yeah okay yes well let's move stage second all in favor yes yeah. yes yes Zero. Telehealth services agreement. I'll move. I'll move. second. Move by Melissa, second by Linda. All in favor? Yes. 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 Approve negotiations for telehealth agreement with the Vera E Care. The nursing yes. services. Did you vote? Yes. Five zero. The MOA. Approved memorandum of agreement regarding absences from work due to COVID-19. Move. Move by Melissa. Second. Second by. I'm glad Linda. to see it. Yeah. All in favor? Yes. 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 Five zero. Thank you, Michelle. Personnel, 8-1, professional contract officers for family services worker, Danielle Coleman. Move. Motion. I'll second. 
second at all of the elementary school. Second by Linda. All in favor? Yes. 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 Eight two. Professional contract offer. Family services worker. Move. Second. Melissa, move, motion. Linda, second. All in favor? Yes. Five zero. I did forget to talk about Krista with all our discussion of the binder. Do you want me to do that now? Um, let's do that in executive session. Remember, we we're going to have executive session after we finished in regards to all of that. Mm -hmm. we, we, do need to talk about that. we do have one more executive session. But first we have some board discussion at, for the public. I have one. And it's something that I had to work with Carol to get clarification on because there were some concerns. So hopefully in the internet world, there's people out in the community that hear this or it could be a thing that, because there were concerns over Little Berg and Klein not being K-8 schools. They are K-8 schools. They have not changed. That's correct? Correct. Um, they do not have to come and enroll in the school and mission to participate in starts. That's correct. But they can still participate if it's not offered out there, still attend school out to Little Burger Klein and come in after school and participate in the activity. Correct? Right. And so if all of a sudden an eighth grader decides they want to go to Little Burg, are they going to be able to go to Little Burg? Uh, probably not six, seven, eight because of the teaching situation. But that Fourth is yeah. ongoing search so that we yeah. can correct that situation. Yeah. It, it, that position has been advertised for over a year. Well, okay. What, what was your last part, Melissa? The question you asked? What was the question you asked? If I'm going to school out to if Little Burg and I want to play basketball. I do not have to come and enroll in a school in Mission. I can play basketball and still go to school at Littleburg. I just come into town for that. Okay, that part with the um, If I had an eighth grader that moved out into the village and said, I want to go to school at Littleburg, would they be able to go because it is a K-8 school? And she said, we don't have a teacher. For the upper grades. We have two staff with the um, third position being advertised. How many students are out there? Uh, 22 right so now. So you have two staff for 22 kids. Mm -hmm. But last year there were And more. how many pairs do they have? Uh, one. They've resigned and I don't know if we have another current one or not. No. And they have a cook? Yes, they do. So the teachers aren't cooking and preparing no. meals? No. And they have a maintenance bus driver? Right. Okay, what does Klein have? Uh, they have K-6 currently. They have a cook and they have a para. So the uh, teacher is not having to prepare meals. They have somebody coming in and yep. doing all of that. Yep. And they have bus drivers. Yeah, they always have had. Okay. Bus drivers. And the sixth grade students out there, if they want to come in and play sports, also, I have a question. Oak Creek is closer. If Oak Creek has the numbers, can they go participate in those at Oak Creek? Right. So that is the original plan, but in the last couple of years, they haven't had enough with Oak Creek, Klein, and Little all combined to make like a basketball team. So but if the numbers would increase, they yeah, could they, they could, could do that. Yeah. Okay. And there is busing to Klein now. Bus that comes to town. Okay. I never used it. There always was when I was on, after I started on the board. John Long Yeah, that, he's Cause old cause school we, though. Because we, I wasn't that long ago, because we, <laughs> Michelle and them too, that's why they moved to Oak Creek. Jeez, it was when we were on the board, we hi, we hi, did busing at Klein. Mm -hmm. But just so people are aware, so there's no more rumor mill, there's no more concerns. There's no misinformation giving out there, and 
that's the way it is. That's what the, that was the one thing I had. Um, and then, do we have any vacant houses in the district? We have a couple. Are we holding them for certified staff or administration? Yes, I've been directed to not to keep them for certified. Um, most of them currently are um, K-Dog, and I don't know, there was a couple of buildings, one used for classes and one for an office, and I don't know the current condition if they're ready for people to live there again or not. At K-Dog, right. those are the only vacant? There's. I think one apartment and one two-bedroom, no basement. Is there anything vacant here in Mission? That's what's vacant here is one, one apartment, one two-bedroom. And no vacant houses out in Hedog? Uh Yeah, I think there's a couple out there. So but I don't know if they're so ready. If you're, but if your Hedog people are going to work in Hedog, wouldn't they want to live out there? Some do, some do not, yes. So they want to work there but not live in the community? Well, it's like transportation and access to supplies for some of them that I'm you know, familiar with. So it's been offered. Actually, we had some out there that I think um, last year moved back. Can we, can we get an update report on that? Of what's vacant, what's filled? Sure. That type of thing, what you're holding them for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd like that too because I know if some of these houses are going to be empty for a long time with all the vandalism going on, I'd be concerned about some of the houses getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't heard of any vandalism in town. We have... Um, we I've have seen not, some cameras from teacher housing yeah. where they have caught people, yeah. so... Well, we did... Um, I think Kevin even put one over by the gas tanks and stuff facing the... And then are we short maintenance people? Yes. Like how short are we maintenance Four, people? I believe. So what do we have for current maintenance staff? We have the director, his um, <laughs> lead worker, and I think one other one currently. We have one person that decided they just want to drive us. They do not want to be in so. Well, I'm just wondering, just, you know, we, we have some football games starting. We have some volleyball games starting. I'm sure you drive out by the football field when you come in to work back and forth through there. And I have to say, heck, I'm about ready to go over there and use my own lawn mower and mow it. It looks mm -hmm. horrible. And I think that appearances, when we have outside people coming in, speak volumes. And how much of the weeds are this dang high on the other side of the fence from the highway to the, the fence, the curb? I mean, one lawnmower length probably take, I don't know, five, ten minutes to walk it, depending on how fast you can walk it. And the football field? It, it looks bad. It does. I know by there too, it looks pretty bad. And I mean, we have teams coming in, we have outsiders coming in, you know, let, it's a pride thing, it's even for our kids, you know, let's make it look nice for them. And right now, some of the landscaping it is lacking, it, it doesn't look nice, and is it, if it's a matter of work study, and we talked about this in the past, you know, where we're short, do we start offering a work study at the high school? and allowing those high school kids to go into those schools or go into maintenance and doing those tasks and paying them something and calling it work study and giving them job skills and teaching them, you know, job skills. We talked about that at our work session where the elementary school is lacking um, help in serving. Mm -hmm. So instead of making the teachers give up time, their time why aren't we offering some of our high school kids that have a study hall or call it work study the opportunity to go over there and fill that gap for us? Mm -hmm. Do they have work study now? Um, have they started yet? No, they have not started. Um, mm -hmm. um, and the funding source is a little different without JOM funding that. So, but, um, 
administration will have to work together on that. Food service is taken care of. They, they're only short one in the whole district, so and that is. But I know Chuck maintains like the football field and stuff, so um, the outside. The outside looks it bad. Is, the, the trash is, looks is. horrible and the weeds are sky high. Um, the second. And that's just well, me sure. seeing that school. I'm sure if I drove out to the other schools, I'm going to see the same situation at the other schools. I mean, one weeds and sidewalks and all I'm sure Chuck will have a crew out there before the first game. Mm -hmm. But is that his job to be doing that? I'm not saying it's his job, but I'm well, I see him out season. mowing the football field, but I'm talking about the outer perimeters and how bad it looks. Yeah, it looks bad. It looks, your housing looks bad. Don't oh, even oh. get me started. Some of those empty houses, there's the grass is tall. And it's very unattractive. It seems like we're <coughs> the same, it's not gone yet, right? Yeah, yes. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Actually, GOM has changed now, so we just had a meeting here at the Red Deer office where we're we'll studying the legal deal. So, we're could you? With the tribe. So, the tribe is overseeing our funds, so we need to get a budget approved to do our study, and I think we can do that. So that's probably we should If we can't we'll do that through JOM, is there some way we can find that within our own budget I as think a school can do district? It, but either way, it's better. Mm -hmm. Let's have the conversation with Rosie. Well, I think it's a priority. Yeah, well, I, I honestly, I think first studies in just to be a bit, it's changed now. Mm -hmm. so, to be an allowable expense. But we're working directly with the tribe, so it's a, it is a different setup now mm -hmm. where the tribe is overseeing our funds. So we're working directly with, you know, tribal aid. Just the, the JOM fund, so, right? The tribe is managing the JOM. But if that wouldn't work, we have something within our own budget that Todd County School District manages that could pay for that. Currently, we do not have anything. But, but we could find a line item teams. for it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. But with all the JOM money, because of the makeup of our students, that would be a lot of money that's in JOM. So that's probably why it goes. He wants to come in and have we connect with this, perhaps. And that's a question. I can use it with your phone. Mm -hmm. They gave us forms to submit for different things. Different if you look activities. at the budget that we just got approved, it's a district-wide one. Mm -hmm. You're approved through the consent agenda. You can see there's a dollar amount there for work study district-wide. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's already there. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but there it's a matter of working Mr. with the high school well maybe you could have Mr. Perner start see where those kids are for the you know and start putting it out and offering it I'm sure most of their schedules are already their schedules are done so he knows yeah. which ones are free and which ones aren't so maybe they have work study scheduled already anyway mm -hmm. well I see some of our seniors especially are leaving school early because they're through with classes I I one young gentleman in particular every day at he must get out his class must end and he walks by at two o'clock every day with his backpack mm -hmm. stops and says hello to Is his grandmother I do not but I, I so. probably not but I'm just saying that we already have a group of students that have a free schedule in the afternoon that our potential immediate work, work potential Questions for Mr. Kerner and Mr. Hammer. Let's see if I can find some help. That's all I have. Anything, Linda, for discussion? No, I'm done. I'd like to be used to from the executive session. Okay, yeah, I got that down. I've, I've been sitting too long. Sit.
just asking a question, is there is there a ratio for student teacher for each building? I wouldn't say for each building, but for like um, K one, you know, you don't want to you don't want to get up past twenty because that's you know that's a lot for you know. And then depending on the smaller schools, on um, different enrollment sizes, um, I've been talking to Principal Guru about Littleburg in particular with the village there, and those smaller classes are big. They're going to keep you know, moving up, so we're going to need more staff there, so we're trying to figure out, um, you know, how we're going to handle that and try and get someone out there. So we've had a couple of individuals that, you know, the you know, alt certification just does not work, so we can't put, you know, an alt cert person out there, so. Um, and then another individual just had, like, language arts, they couldn't teach all of the content, so. At one time, in years past, at, and I'm just going to use Lakeview because I was aware of it at the time, their higher grades, they had two teachers and the kids alternated between mm -hmm. the two because of their certifications, right. because one was language arts and, yeah, some, and, right. the, and the other one was like a math, mm -hmm. social studies, and the other one was, you know, so is that a potential where we find two teachers and maybe they have, they don't have to be certified and everything, but they held these and then you find the other teacher and teacher the older others. kids could go spend half a day with this one, half a day with the other one. Because that had been the answer at Lakeview at one time. Yeah. And we have done that, do do that somewhat, so yeah. But we just don't have any applicants. And we do have housing out there, so that is the one the one bonus. We have a trailer out there, so if we can find someone, you know, living right there. And so we need to start looking at our recruitment and doing a better job of selling ourselves. No teacher applicant? Not, not that it's not international so at this point. Have we done a survey? Has our personnel director looked at doing a survey of some of our teachers that came here from out of the area, why they chose Todd County? Why did they come here? Why'd you pick, Tony Galvin, why'd you pick Todd County? Why did I pick it? Yeah. Because I had a friend in college who recommended to me to go to grad school, so I came over here and had a back so when we talk about remember they said use your use your staff use your students to build your school to refer retention recruitment should we be sending people like Mr. Galvin who wasn't from the area and came to Todd County and talk about he fell in love with our students, you will too, give it a chance. We have done that, <laughs> and especially if like um, USD, if we have a grad from there that's working here, we go down, so you know they recognize a lot of the students and they do come over for the booth, so we have done that, yeah. We'll probably need to do a better job of that again after COVID and not going anywhere. Last year, you know, we didn't, I don't think we sent staff last year, but we definitely have, and that's a good recruitment tool. Um, the other He's one. He's going to be on our schedule, though, our personnel director, right? Yes. For an update? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Can I add a little bit to that? Um, I am going to be, Jody Jackson was one of the people that was uh, going out to do recruiting, and we're going to meet. And we're going to revamp our booth setup, and we're we're talking. She wants to. We also want to start maybe going to some different job fairs because um, primarily they've just been going to the local ones and the basically the tri-state area. And we're going to try to expand that this year as well. So to do them earlier too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some notices that we've gotten for earlier job fairs, so. I mean, it, and it could be a dorky thing like this. Um, I know that in years past, Mr. Gelvin might not, um, 
when TFA teachers, when we had a big volume of TFA teachers, and that's kind of has declined. Um, I remember a group of them, and their thing was to visit every state park in South Dakota. And they were all excited. They all bought their yearly state park pass. I mean, is that a perk? We could do, Mr. Blotsky, or no? Is it an, a hard no? I mean, I don't know if that's just something. Maybe it was just that group and it was just that year, but they were all psyched about getting their little checklist of, and they had went to, and they, well, and, and it took them longer than a year, so they had to stay here longer than a year because they went to every state park. I'm not talking about the national ones with all the fun stuff. I'm talking about they looked up the South Dakota state parks and went, and there's a long, there's a lot of South Dakota state parks and went to every single one. I mean, and, and maybe some little tiny perks, you know, come work for us and we'll inter give you a pass and introduce you to every state park in South Dakota. I mean, we gotta come up with, with something. There's nothing else. We do have an executive session about personnel. I'll stay for that. Are you going to stay for it, Linda? Yeah. Yep, thank you. I'm going to walk around a little bit. Okay, I need a drink of water. Can we take, like, can we set it to five start minutes. five minutes? Yes, ma'am. And I'll make the motion to go in at 740? Because we're 734, so sure. six minutes. Seven. I'll second. Yes. All in favor? Yes. 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 I'm in an area where I'm stuck with body wife and I might be coming in and cutting in and out. Okay. We'll keep but checking I'll try, on you. I'll try to play it. Thank you guys I'll for coming.